Have you ever thought to yourself, I feel bad, and if I feel worse, that will change something. This time, I swear it, because I want to change and I believe in myself. I thought that to myself like two hours ago. And whenever I think this to myself, does anything change? No! It's an easier escape from reality, waiting for the magic conch shell to lead me out of the jungle to salvation. As if the answers to all your problems will fall right out of the sky! <laughs> We're falling right out of the sky! We gotta drop the load! As kids, we're taught by our parents to throw temper tantrums. Not directly, but indirectly. Wah wah, boo boo, cry cry, me want chocolate. Eventually our parents are like, shut up kid, take this chocolate bar and leave me alone. That's how we're taught to get the things that we want. Do adults throw temper tantrums? I'm sure they do. It's just that when an adult throws a temper tantrum, no one's listening. No one really gives us what we want. We just do it to voice our frustrations out to the world, shifting the responsibility of being an adult to no one, feeding into the mentality of being a victim. That's pretty appealing for a young person who's struggling to figure out who they are while no one else seems to care. The vibe has become a sacred cow and no one wants to kill the sacred cow. Yaho everyone, I am Super Genki and I have a question for you. When you hear the word Super Genki, do you think, Super Genki, that guy's acting like a victim? No, you probably don't think that. You probably think, Super Genki, isn't that guy always on drugs? And sadly, you'd be wrong. If I was on drugs, then I could explain all of this. But because I'm not, I'm still trying to figure out what makes me so crazy. But I asked myself this question today. Am I really playing the part of a victim? I never thought about it before, but it crossed my mind today that I may have been acting like a victim for the past five odd years. The rise of victimhood culture, microaggressions, safe spaces, and the new culture wars. I never thought about it too deeply because you know, first page of search results plus first search result. But before I started doing this research, I realized that for the past five years, I have closed my mind off to the possibility of even being a victim simply because I didn't agree with it. And little did I know that I was playing the part of a victim in my own life. The world is a really different place than it was in the early 2000s. And I don't think it's just boomers clashing with millennials. I think it's millennials clashing with themselves. I don't want to be a victim but when it's being broadcasted to me by news, education, and pop culture, it's hard not to feel that way sometimes. Because some of my worst habits are just escapes, and victimhood culture promotes escaping from reality. Hence, propping up victimhood mentality. And what I've realized today is victimhood culture is really just justification for procrastination. And procrastination feels good. That's why so many people do it. I've been an active practitioner of procrastination my whole life. But it's never gotten me anywhere. In fact, it's made me more unhappy than I could ever remember. So if fixing procrastination is a way to fix self-pity, and fixing self-pity could be a way to fix victimhood mentality, then to link this whole thing together, maybe fixing procrastination is a way to fix the mentality of being a victim. How do we do that? I have no idea, but I'm going to put my brain to work tomorrow and come back at you with another video. Anyway, everyone, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. We need to get the good word of positivity out there to as many people as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.